Hello and welcome to our second webinar here from Maker Suite HQ. Uh, we are super excited. Uh, Julia is also here. Hey, and welcome from my side as well. And uh, happy International Women's Day to everyone. Uh, yes, absolutely. Happy International Women's Day to everyone and all the female listeners and uh, viewers uh, out there. And we are super excited today to show you the new version of our AI script editor that has story frameworks, uh, storytelling frameworks integrated into the product that um, allow you to create scripts with uh, much higher quality because this time um, your scripts have a lot more structure to them and therefore they have a lot more depth and um, you as a user and creator uh, can create scripts that have um, uh, where you have a lot more control over the length of the scripts and um, that was something that um, you guys have been asking and we addressed uh, this problem and we are super excited about it so hopefully we can answer most of your questions, all of your questions, uh, depending on how many are coming in. And uh, yeah, we are super excited about it. And um, maybe just to touch a little bit on the development uh, of the AI script editor, this new iteration of the script editor. So um, as you know, over the past couple of weeks, we have been very actively communicating uh, uh, with you guys um, over many different channels, but especially over Discord, where we now have uh, um, a couple of hundred uh, um, people that we engage with on a daily basis. And what is really important for us is um, when we develop new stuff or decide that we want to develop new stuff, that we um, hop on calls with you. Um, we show you some of the designs, obviously not every one of you, but some of you and ask for questions um, so that uh, the product that we are building is actually really um, addressing your needs um, and um, we get the best out of it. Um, and that's what we have done over the last uh, couple of weeks. And for those of you who are maybe not on the Discord channel yet, I would like to invite you to um, go log into your Maker Suite profile and then you see a little Discord icon on the side and you can join our Discord channel as well for future, future interactions, for feature requests. Um, and obviously you can always um, ask us questions um, regarding the product or problems that you have. But this is not the only way to get in contact with us. What you can also do is um, obviously in the product, um, there's a chat functionality, uh, a chat window on the uh, bottom right hand corner. Um, you can always send us a message there and um, either Julia um, or I or David or Artem uh, are going to read those messages and then we're going to um, answer them as quickly as possible. And um, obviously, email also works. Um, the email address that you can write us uh, um, with is gethelp at makersuite.com. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. And um, maybe um, I can also give you a little bit of background um, for five minutes about, about Makersuite. Um, for those of you who are joining uh, this webinar for the first time, or those of you who haven't seen um, some of the, have seen the, the old webinar or uh, some of the other content that is out there on our AppSumo page, um, our website, um, or our YouTube channel. Um, and that's another invitation. If you don't already uh, uh, follow us on YouTube, please do, because this is where we are uploading a lot of um, tutorial content um, and in the future also other content about um, video creation and um, how to become a better storyteller and it's definitely worthwhile um, checking out those videos as well you will also find all the webinars or this webinar um, on youtube uh, later on um, but maybe just quickly about maker suite um, so what are we doing? Um, Makersuite is a video pre-production uh, uh, platform that focuses on storytelling. And our idea really is that we have over the last couple of years 
um, figured out um, or talked to hundreds of people that are creating um, online video. And obviously, there's three main challenges in video creation. Um, there's uh, the storytelling and the script writing part. There's the recording part. Um, and then there's the post-production and distribution part. And um, what we have found out is obviously in the market, there's a lot of tools that help you edit your videos. Um, there's a lot um, um, of, of great editing tools um, that have um, come out over the last couple of years. Um, and then there's obviously a lot of really nice recording tools um, as well. Um, Loom is one, for example, um, that we use for our tutorials. There's other great um, software for um, live video creation, um, uh, like Wave, that we're using just now. And what we have found out is that a lot of people would like to create more video content, but what they are struggling with is that they don't get to the point where they can actually record something. Because um, a lot of you guys are working a nine to five um, um, because you're running a business um, or you're maybe running an agency um, and, and you work for many different clients at the same time. And it is difficult for you to uh, streamline the pre-production process a little bit um, and get really and create really good quality um, storyline um, and scripts that you can then uh, record and post produce um, and this is really the problem that we are addressing uh, with maker suite to look at the upfront steps of the value chain and um, especially look at research and um, the script writing part and then yeah, give you the tools um, and also the data um, to create good storylines um, um, for whatever your goal is. And um, yeah, this is, um, this is essentially now the second webinar. In the first webinar, we talked about the research part. In the second webinar, we are now talking about um, the new uh, script writing editor and the new workflow. And yeah, we're super excited um, to do this. And uh, maybe I have forgotten up to, to talk about anything. <laughs> Did I forget anything, Julia? No, no, I think you mentioned everything. Um, and I think that's a good bridge for us to also jump over to the screen um, uh, sharing and uh, you can go more deeply into introducing the new script writer that we just um, published yesterday. So it's a, it's a fresh feature. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I yeah. think you yeah, can see everything. You. Yes, perfect. So um, we have changed uh, a few little things. Um, just a quick reminder, um, if you join, uh, if you log into your Makersuite account, this is what you will see. You have the projects. Um, this is basically all your scripts that you've written. You then have the explorations. Um, those are the research projects uh, that you have started. And if you uh, know how the exploration tool works, um, what, what you know is that uh, from the explorations, you can actually get recommendations on what, cre what videos you should be creating next or what ideas you should be creating next. Um, and then you can create a project from there. And then you basically also enter into um, the uh, new uh, script writing flow that we're going to introduce today. Um, the other two entry points are actually the purple tile and the yellow tile. Um, the yellow tile basically is um, allows you to create a script from scratch. Um, it doesn't require you to um, use the Makersuite AI to actually create your script. But what you can also do is you can, um, we have now put the workflow um, at the top and you can toggle between those different tabs um, and basically also enter the new um, uh, script writing flow. And um, you get to the same screen by using the purple tile, you can create a project. And then you also, uh, also enter the new briefing screen. Um, and this is where most of the innovation lies. And um, why did we do this? So first of all, um, if you use, um, let's say, ChatGPT to write a script, um, and most of you, I assume, will have done this in the past, 
um, what you have to do is you have to write very elaborate um, prompts and very often you have to write multiple prompts to get to an outline um, that is really satisfying and covers all your needs. And um, then to actually turn this outline into a fully written script, what you very often have to do is you have to copy and paste a lot of the, the sections of your outline um, and prompt it again um, to, um, to, the, to, to the AI to then really get to a length that is satisfying, right? And length control has been an issue. And um, a lot of you guys have um, uh, also mentioned this to us in the past, that no matter whether you chose to write a long script or a short script, the length very often was very similar. And um, by changing the workflow a little bit, we have now addressed this issue. And um, you can now choose between three different different lengths of the video. So short videos are between 500 to 600 words. Medium length is around 1,500 words. And then long form is around 2,500 words. So um, in minutes, it's um, probably two to three minutes then a 10 minute long video and a 20 long min minute video. And um, one thing that I cannot stress enough, but I want to highlight it again and again and again is what we're doing with Maker Suite is not intended to um, completely substitute human creativity, right? For us, we're building this for humans and um, AI is a great technology to use. And we at Makersuite believe that um, in the future, AI will be in every single product, um, no matter what you're doing. And it will be an aid um, to help you um, streamline certain workflows, to help you um, offload uh, certain repetitive tasks, um, to also help you interpret um, data um, to um, get to your goal uh, a little bit quicker. Um, and um, this is exactly what we're trying to do with Makersuite. And everything that Makersuite creates for you and generates for you is not intended to be used um, one on one, one on one to uh, like in, in a script. So the outlines that are being generated and the scripts that are being generated. Um, we say they are they're a really good first draft, but then it's really up to you to go into the scripts, make them your own, add your own flavor, um, and um, yeah, add more um, of your own knowledge, um, your own experiences, and your own examples to really create something that is completely unique to you. Obviously, um, this new iteration is um, a massive step forward in making this first draft even better than it was before. And what we have introduced um, in this new update is storytelling frameworks. So what you see here is actually six different storytelling frameworks. These are essentially templates um, that you can use to tell your story in a much more structured way. And um, I will not go into detail about each of one of these um, frameworks because I would like you to actually try them out, test them out for yourselves. But what I can say is that each storytelling framework has strengths and weaknesses. And they are um, not all um, a great use for, uh, for all the different use cases, right? So for example, a product review works very different from a content piece where you're trying to sell a service or product, right? Um, one is um, uh, a little bit more informative, while the other one um, talks a little bit more about benefits and advantages um, that your product or service has. Um, and it also addresses the problems um, that maybe the person that you're selling something to um, is um, is facing, right? And this then also is very different to educational content. We are not essentially selling something, but you want the audience to take something home, right? You want to educate them on a topic um, and you want to let them know um, um, about, um, about 
certain specific topics in your industry or your niche um, or maybe more general topics um, from the biology space or history or mathematics um, depending on uh, what you're creating and what you're um, trying to teach others um, these at the moment are only we have six frameworks um, and there will be a lot more coming in the future um, at the moment, these frameworks are very focused on um, marketing or yeah, marketing content, um, but also education um, uh, content as well. And then in the future, um, as I said, there will be many, many more templates uh, coming. And you can basically then choose, depending on what use case uh, you're creating video for, you can choose um, one of the templates that you like, um, and then you can um, bookmark them and um, yeah, create them uh, or use them um, on a regular basis uh, for your scripts. Um, then um, the next section is um, the brief briefing section. Essentially, um, this is um, quite similar to uh, the previous version of the script editor, but we have changed uh, a few little things. So first of all, the project duration that I've already mentioned. Um, we have now three different lengths, short, medium, and long form. Then uh, the language um, also stayed the same. Um, we are currently um, um, supporting 74 different languages. And um, for those of you who, uh, for, for those who uh, that maybe um, don't have English as their first language, I would just advise you to go in um, and, and check if your language is already supported. And if it is not, um, you can let us know either via Discord or what you can also do is you can go on our website and go on um, the product roadmap se section. And um, there, I'm going to show you this in a couple of minutes. There's a little section that um, is called support uh, more languages. And then you can simply um, drop in the language that you want to be see supported in the future. Um, and then you have a project title. So if you come from the exploration tab, um, then this project title is, um, is already filled out. Um, in this case, if you go in directly into the briefing screen, you obviously um, have to figure out the title yourself. Um, or maybe you have saved a title from a previous uh, exploration and then you can just copy paste it into here. And uh, this is what I'm going to do um, uh, now quickly. Um, if I have, no, I don't have it open yet. Um, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you because I've already done this. Um, then the project goal. Um, it is um, basically what you want to do with your video. What is the goal that you want to achieve? So um, you can also use the, the light bulb um, uh, on the right hand side. Um, and then you can pre-select one of the um, or you can select one of the, the pre-written goals, um, educational content, brand building, lead generation. Um, and then you fill that out. What is different to all these fields is that they're um, that they're free fields. So you can literally write um, long long text in here um, and give very detailed instructions to the Maker Suite AI on um, what the goal should be. Right. So, for example, in this case, I'm doing a video about um, how Maker Suite can help you write better stories for your video content. So the goal I could for example, um, that I could, for example, put in here is the goal with this video is to educate my viewers on how to use Maker Suite um, uh, to become a better storyteller. This could be um, um, a goal, and this goal then gives the Maker Suite AI um, a lot more context on what you're actually trying to do. Then describe the creator in one sentence. This is essentially where um, you talk either if you're creating content for yourself, you talk about yourself. If you're uh, creating content for others, um, because you're maybe a freelancer or you're working um, in an agency or in a marketing department um, um, of uh, a company, then um, you can describe your client or the company that you work for in here and what they're doing. So um, for Maker Suite, um, 
a quick description like Makersuite is a data-driven content creation platform that helps content creators globally to streamline the pre-production process. This could be, um, again, a little bit more context about um, who you are and um, the AI will then take this into account uh, when creating the context. And then the target audience, this is actually um, very interesting because for those of you who have a YouTube channel, um, not all of your videos um, um, essentially target the same people all of the time, right? So for example, Makersuite has a YouTube channel um, and um, in the future on this channel, we will have tutorial content, but we will also have a little bit of educational content that is not Makersuite related, but storytelling related. And um, therefore this um, might also be um, very interesting content for non-Makersuite users. And um, yeah, this is your chance to actually define the target audience um, a little bit more precisely. And then this is something that um, a lot of you have requested is to actually be able to um, prompt the AI um, directly with a lot more context, right? And uh, this is your, uh, your chance to do it in, in this field. So for example, you want to talk about, again, I'm taking the Make a Suite example, you want to talk about the new AI script editor and how it works. So what I would do is I would write a little paragraph um, about the script editor, the new workflow, the storytelling frameworks, um, and how um, the AI uses all this information um, to create better storylines. And um, this would then again be taken into account when creating the outline and then later on um, when creating the script from the outline. And then the last section, um, this is something that has been in the previous version as well, but um, we have um, improved it um, a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and again, you have the light bulb, um, you can choose from uh, different tonalities. And then um, you can also give style examples, right? This is something that um, a lot of people have requested to be able to upload um, a piece of text from one of your old videos, or maybe you want to copy the style of um, um, another YouTuber or a famous brand or person, and then you just take a little um, uh, text piece from um, your favorite YouTuber, your favorite politician, your favorite comedian, um, you um, put it in here. And then what the AI will do is it will imitate that style for your, uh, for your script. Obviously for the, for the script outline, this will not be taken into account because the outline essentially is um, just a, a list with bullet points. Um, but then when you turn um, the outline into a script, what will happen is that the all the information from the outline will be taken and all the information from the uh, briefing screen will be taken into account and then the script will be generated for you. So um, as you know, creating an outline and creating a script always takes uh, a couple of seconds um, and especially the new script writing uh, progress um, takes a little bit longer because it's a little bit more elaborate. So what I want to do is I have already created um, a project that has um, both of these created because I don't want you to wait in this webinar um, and, and sit around. So um, the outline, um, what you can see here is so I basically have chosen the WWH framework, which is good for educational content. The project duration is long. Um, I have um, put in all the different information pieces um, for these questions here. And then um, I've given it a little bit more context. And then you can always toggle between the different uh, production flows, right? And um, this is already a preview for you to see um, that in the future, there will be more tabs coming uh, to this workflow. And you can, you can um, jump between the different tabs um, and, um, and change certain um, uh, building blocks um, of your script writing process. And everything is connected. They're all because they all depend on each other. Um, so if in the future um, there's maybe a, um, um, a storyboard um, um, coming to this workflow here, 
um, then obviously the things will change if you if you change something in the storyboard or in the script it all needs to happen and change in the same um, places at the different um, steps of production so what you can see here is that the outline that has been generated uh, now follows uh, this framework which is uh, the why the what and the how um, framework it has always a hook at the beginning and um, basically a little recap um, and um, depending on what framework you choose also a call to action at the end and obviously this is a a script editor it works like a word document so what you can do is you can always change uh, things you can add things um, and um, yeah make this outline a lot more elaborate if you want to or if you think that some pieces are missing um, that you have maybe found during your research phase in a different video um, and uh, this is the moment where you can put it into um, the outline and then you press generate script and then this takes a couple of seconds um, and then this outline is turned into a fully written script and what is happening here is now that um, instead of creating everything at once we are actually creating the script um, step by step um, allowing us to control the length um, uh, a lot better and also uh, going a lot deeper into the, um, the script itself um, because if you do everything at once um, what we have found is that the quality very often um, uh, it takes a hit and um, the depth of the videos um, not always but very often um, very superficial um, so yeah this, this problem should be addressed with this workflow and then when the script has been generated so in this example um, I chose uh, a long video so what you can see is that um, the video um, or the script that has been generated is now 2800 words um, so that's quite a long script actually almost 20 minutes always depending on how fast you speak um, but um, yeah this is um, um, something that um, was not possible in, in the previous iteration and the only way to make the script longer um, was to actually use um, the chat functionality at the bottom where you could um, yeah, basically prompt the AI to make something longer, shorter, or elaborate on certain topics, add certain talking points, um, things like that. Um, and this functionality is obviously still there. Um, and also the quick actions menu uh, is also there. Maybe one thing that I can or that I want to highlight with these two um, action items at the bottom is that if you don't select anything in your script, then the quick actions menu will um, take um, or will apply the action on the whole script. And if you, for example, only take a certain part of the uh, um, of the script and highlight it, um, it will stay highlighted. And then if you uh, do a quick action, so for example, make longer um, or make shorter, then it will only address the certain um, the certain part of the video script. So this is now a much, much longer um, hook for your video. I don't want to apply this now. And the same is um, true for the for the chat window, right? So this is this essentially works exactly like ChatGPT4. And um, you can prompt it anything you want. Um, you can ask it for feedback. You can ask it to come up with new ideas and um, to put under this part of the um, uh, uh, the, the script. Um, you can um, ask it to elaborate on certain parts, give examples on certain parts, um, and yeah, it is a full um, full integration um, in here, and you have uh, full controllability and full freedom to do whatever you want. Um, and then you can simply insert um, or replace um, the text that has been um, uh, or use the text that has been generated to replace the old text. Um, so yeah, we are super excited for you to to test this out, uh, play around with this, um, and get back get back to us with uh, what you think about it. Um, if you're happy with the quality, 
um, that is being generated. And um, maybe if you have um, ideas for improvement, obviously also let us know. And then the last um, tab of the production workflow is um, essentially the, the publishing ideas. This is also something that you already know. Um, it is the descriptions part and the tags part. And um, yeah, the descriptions are something that you can, if you're uploading content on YouTube, um, they come in very handy because um, you can put them in your description section. You can obviously also um, add other things here. And um, yeah, the, the tags on the side and both of them you can always um, regenerate. And um, yeah, that's the introduction for the new um, script writing flow. Um, I hope I have uh, covered everything. And um, yeah, I would love to, for you uh, to actually go in there, try it out and um, yeah, let us know um, either via chat or, or Discord um, what you like what you don't like. And because um, of the fact that um, this feature is so new and was only released yesterday, um, we are um, aware that there might be the occasional bug here and there. So um, uh, please be patient uh, with us and uh, let us know about the bugs uh, that you find. Um, sometimes if you uh, create uh, an outline or create a script, um, maybe you won't get notified immediately um, or um, it looks like it's not generating. Um, so um, yeah, um, be patient, refresh uh, your, your, your page every now and then um, because it's very likely that something is happening um, in the back end. Um, but maybe um, um, it, it looks like that that something doesn't happen. So um, yeah, go in, test it out. Um, and um, if you find a mistake, let us know. Um, or if you find a bug, let us know. Um, and then we will sort it out over the next uh, couple of days. Um, or maybe even in a couple of minutes, depending on what problem you're facing. And um, yeah, I think that's um, it for the, the educational tutorial part of um, this webinar and uh, what we would like uh, to do now is um, to show you uh, one more thing we, before we go into the Q&A section um, of this webinar. And um, I already see that a lot of you have already uh, put some questions in the chat, which is great. But before we go into this, um, I would like to invite you to actually go on our website and um, if you go to the uh, the bottom section of the website, you can see um, um, the product roadmap uh, on the company. You can click on this. And then um, what you see here is basically our public roadmap. Um, so the things that are already live, the things that we're currently working on, um, and the things that are planned for the future. And um, all you have to do if you want to um, take part in this voting process or if you want to add your own ideas is um, you have to create um, an upvote account um, here. And then uh, you can click on one of these uh, numbers and you can uh, create a post. Um, you can uh, give it a name, add some details. The more details you give, um, obviously, the better. Um, and you can then upvote on certain parts of um, uh, the product roadmap um, to basically indicate um, 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 how important this is um, for you. And then obviously, when we have our product meetings, what we will do is we will take the public roadmap and um, we will look at all the things that you guys have put there. And we will um, take this into account when making our decisions, what we think we should be producing or developing next uh, and bring to the product. So um, that's one uh, um, way for you guys to, um, to interact with us um, on, on, um, on the product features. So please go there um, if you haven't done so already and um, vote for things that you'd like to see in the product in the future. And um, if you don't feel uh, that you want to join uh, that voting process, um, you can also simply um, shoot us a message um, on Discord. Um, we have a um, very specific uh, channel uh, on Discord for future uh, feature requests. And you can just uh, drop us a little essay in there with all the different ideas that you have. 
and um, yeah, and let us know. But um, why don't we now open the floor for um, the Q and A uh, session? And um, yeah, maybe Julia, you have already filtered out some of the the questions that people have, and we're super happy to answer them. Yes. Um, so just a reminder to everyone, you can send questions in the chat and I will select some of them and, and show them to Philip and he will answer your questions the best he can. Um, but I think we can start with one question that came from the forms that we or the registration form that we use for this event because it kind of relates to what you just explained. So let me just show it here. Um, okay, the question was, I may have not uh, found it, but which are your plans for this year, Q2, Q3, Q4, uh, um, and so on? Where can I update or suggest an update for a feature on your roadmap? So, um, yeah, perfect. So I just showed you the public uh, product roadmap. So this is um, basically a, a really good place for you to go and let us know about what you would like to see in the product. Um, but then also Discord um, is an amazing channel. Um, as I just said, we have a set, we have a um, specific channel for feature requests, and um, you can simply drop your ideas in there, and then um, we will take this into our product discussions. And um, and then basically, what we have is um, we always think about okay, how valuable could this feature be for our users, and then also how much time and effort does it take to actually produce and develop this feature um, and how long will it take to actually get into the product right so for example um, we we have projects that we know will take us a year to to finish to get into the product so they run in the background and um, we start doing them because we believe that when they come to the product they will be complete game changers right but obviously our development process can't only focus on like really long-term feature development because that would mean that for a year we wouldn't bring anything new to the platform right so we always have to think about um, yeah, this we call it the bang for buck metric. Um, so uh, there are lower hanging fruits that are already massive improvements to the application. So for example, this new script writing flow with the frameworks, that's something that um, it took us a couple of weeks um, and is a massive improvement uh, already, right? So um, when you give us feedback, we then take this information and then um, we will look at uh, the resources needed um, the value it will drive for um, our users and um, and the time it will take um, to actually implement this. And then we will um, make a decision on when we're going to start um, developing certain, uh, certain feature sets. Um, and then what are the plans for Q2 uh, and the rest of the year? So... Um, at the moment, we have a couple of new um, um, very important features that we want to bring uh, to the, the platform. Um, one of the big projects or bigger projects um, that we think is going to drastically improve um, how you use Makersuite is to connect the research part and the script writing part um, a lot better. And um, just to give you an example, when you at the moment do the research and when you do um, so uh, when you do your explorations and when you um, analyze individual videos, um, what you um, often find is specific talking points um, that you like or maybe um, topics um, uh, or sentences in videos or information pieces in videos um, that you would like to um, uh, um, maybe also put in your next video. Um, and that's very natural, right? You go on YouTube and you watch other people's content and you get inspired by them or you think, oh, that's a useful information that I maybe should also put into my content piece. And at the moment, Makersuite doesn't have a space or a place in the workflow where you can basically save all your ideas um, like a pin board and then bring them into the creation process. So... Um, this is one of the uh, the projects that we're currently discussing um, on 
um, yeah, basically a, a pin board um, or a notes section um, that allows you to organize um, the content from your research um, a little bit better and then uh, seamlessly integrate it into, into the creation process. And then there's obviously um, other features. Um, I uh, just mentioned that there are some that um, take uh, several months to be developed. Um, um, I think now is not the right time to give away what uh, those features are. Um, um, but yeah, there is some um, really, really great stuff in the pipeline um, for the future. Then um, maybe another topic that is very obvious if you have read uh, the comment section on AppSumo or uh, the reviews or if you follow uh, what's going on on Discord, um, um, multi-user um, access um, to make a suite is also in very high demand um, or the storyboard. Um, so um, those are very likely going to be features um, that we are um, going to be working on um, for the rest of the year. Um, those are big features. There's obviously a lot of um, smaller things um, coming to the product as well. And again, if you are on Discord, um, you will see that every single week uh, we are um, uh, bringing stuff um, to the product. Um, sometimes it's only very small things um, that make uh, the usability uh, nicer um, or the performance nicer. Um, and sometimes, like uh, like today or yesterday, it's um, it's bigger releases. Um, but yeah, there's uh, a lot of stuff planned for the rest of the year, and we're very excited about it. Then the next question um, from the storytelling framework: I see there's a lot of marketing and selling. One for a review product. My question for documentary style story. Um, which one is suitable? So this is very interesting because um, we will um, we will add more frameworks um, in the future that are um, not only geared towards marketing and selling, but also for um, storytelling. So, for example, um, um, vlogs, documentaries, um, reports, um, things like that. Um, and they will all come to the product um, and uh, we will add them uh, one by one um, with each uh, with each week um, for the moment uh, to answer your question for the documentary style um, what i would uh, recommend is probably look at um, the wwh framework and then also at um, you can look at the uh, pasta framework or the five c's um, framework as well um, I would say those are the three ones um, that lend themselves um, probably the best to be used in a documentary style. Can we add text somehow that creates our voice uh, or in the voice of? Um, so if I understand this question correctly, um, this is uh, probably exactly um, what we have done here at the bottom. It's uh, about the style and uh, basically briefing the AI how to imitate a style of um, yourself or maybe a, a different uh, content creator. So this is your this is your way to do it. So if you already have written a couple of scripts, just take one or two paragraphs, copy paste them in here, and then uh, you're sorted. Then the next question, it would seem that the WWH framework would be the best suited for content um, SEO for SEO content because it could address Google's expertise, experience, authority and trust criteria better than the other frameworks. Do you agree? Yes, I, I absolutely agree. I think um, it really depends on, um, on what you're really trying to do. Um, what I would probably do is I would test a couple of scripts um, um, for the same topic, uh, a different, uh, like test a couple of uh, frameworks for the same topic. Um, and then because you always, we advise you to always go in and individualize it yourself. Um, you can then obviously go in and tweak it and see, okay, what is the closest to um, what you have seen in the past um, uh, that works. And um, obviously what I would always do is 
especially if you're uh, creating content um, for, for SEO, make sure that you're hitting all the right keywords, you're hitting all the right key phrases, um, and you make sure that your, your script is, um, is fully catering um, to what you are trying to achieve. But again, this is something that you can prompt to the AI in your goal section, and you can literally tell it, um, optimize the script uh, for SEO as much as you can. And then um, if you feel like that the first generation doesn't do that quite well, you can then always use the chat functionality to tweak it even more. Um, so yeah, that would be that would be my advice. Um, there is um, probably no one single golden path um, to follow, uh, because if there was, uh, all the content would look and feel um, exactly the same. And um, yeah, I think in a um, in a world or the world that we're moving into, uh, we all have these tools available. We all have access to whether it's text generation and in the future or image generation and then text to video generation. And the really the, the best way to stand out is add your own flavor, add your individuality, right? Um, and maybe that's not the case so much for SEO content, but if you want to build content for your brand and build a brand, um, it's, um, it's, it's really important to, um, to make these scripts your own. Does the new system use the story arc to create uh, scripts? Um, yes. So the storytelling frameworks essentially are uh, storytelling arcs, right? So the reason why we have introduced these frameworks is essentially that um, in the past, if you don't, if you don't give uh, the AI um, instructions on uh, on this on the structure of uh, the video, it will either go rogue or it will just follow a very monotone structure. And um, it's it's not only true for AI, it's also true for humans, right? If you tell someone to write a script who has never written a script before, then um, they will not um, have like this storytelling arc in their in their in their mind when creating the script. And um, yeah, we, we've shown you these frameworks. But for example, in um, in film, um, um, the most uh, the, yeah, the, the most famous story arc is the hero's journey, right? You have this character um, and um, he's, he or she is living a great life and then something bad happens and then it's the, it's the crisis moment and then for the rest of the movie, um, this, uh, this character is, um, is basically fighting her, whack, her way back to the top. Um, and uh, whether you watch a series on um, on on a streaming platform or go to the uh, the cinema, there's all these different story arcs, um, right? And we're going to bring more and more um, to make a suite in the future. Um, and the idea is really to follow these storytelling patterns that have existed for for decades, hundreds of years, right? Um, if you if you read Greek um, um, mythology. Um, a lot of the same story arcs apply that uh, people are using today when you go to the cinema and watch the uh, Dune, uh, Dune 2, right? Um, same char character development. Um, and um, yeah, that's something that we want to cover um, and basically help you get right um, from, uh, from the beginning without having you to go to film school um, or do video for uh, five to 10 years to actually learn it yourself. I'd like to see a hook library. Um, that's interesting. Uh, maybe you can uh, elaborate in a separate uh, question uh, uh, whether you mean that um, hooks that you have previously created um, um, yourself should be saved to a library, and then you can basically um, um, you can basically choose from that library, or whether you want to see. Um, specifically frameworks um, for hooks, and then we use those frameworks for only the hook section. Uh, would be interesting to know um, uh, in the comments uh, what exactly you mean. Um, and this is obviously something that um, um, is is already one one level deeper um, than one what you're doing what we're doing uh, um, here right now. And um, I absolutely uh, don't see uh, why we shouldn't be doing this in the future. 
Would you consider adding text, PDF, docs as the knowledge base for video script generation? Yes, we have uh, discussed this internally. Um, um, we are uh, figuring out um, um, the, the technical uh, feasibility of it and how we're gonna uh, how we're gonna do it. Um, but we are very aware that um, others are, uh, are doing this, and um, we will also very likely have um, basically a little um, option where you can upload um, a PDF um, or a Word document. Um, to make a suite and then the information in this document will be taken into account um, when imitating the style or also um, if you want to add more context uh, right um, in our opinion um, this is um, this goes into the uh, is ex sits exactly at the intersection of script writing and research because as you know at the moment the research um, uh, solely focuses on uh, video content on YouTube at this moment in time. Um, but there's obviously also a lot of great content on in written form on websites, but then maybe you have research papers um, or um, maybe all the essays that you have written um, and um, maybe um, ebooks, something like that. So we will address this um, in the future. Uh, we're thinking about it and um, we will not do it all at once um, because that would be impossible. Um, but um, step by step, we're going to add um, um, little features that allow you um, to, to give even more context um, um, to the AI. How can I see the video reference uh, used while writing the script? Um, I th so at the moment, um, if I again, if I understand the question correctly, um, at the moment, this is uh, something that Makerspeed doesn't show. Um, and we are very aware of this. Um, it's again, this linking between research and script generation. And um, there's a there's a missing there's a missing piece here that we are want to address uh, in the upcoming weeks and months. Um, and um, our plan is to, to do this with like a, a pin board and a note section, um, because as your question shows, um, it is something that people want to know and have more control over. Um, and we are very, well, uh, very aware of this. And um, uh, at the moment, unfortunately, we don't address it. Um, so, Good question. Uh, homework for us. What is the best way to use Makersuite to generate content in the German market, in, in the German language? Does it make sense to select US YouTube channels as examples or stay within Germany where there are um, far less clicks? Okay, that's a very interesting question. And this doesn't only apply to Germany, it also applies to all the other regions in this world and um, you are all not creating from the same place uh, you're all from all over the world creating in different languages creating for different demographics um, and um, the my question to this is at the moment um, we do not geolocate um, the research um, simply um, because of the fact that we have we had this option in the past, um, but um, we found a few little bugs and um, we need to properly um, tidy it up before um, adding this feature back in. So at the moment, when you do research, the research always happens on a global scale. Is that bad or is it good? First of all, um, it, is, it, it is not bad because... Um, um, if it happens on a global scale, then it gives you a really good indication um, if there is a certain target audience for the type of content um, that you want to produce content for, right? For, for the for the niche that you want to produce content for. So um, this already gives you a really good indication um, if there's an appetite for your niche, right? So if there's a global appetite, then um, then it is um, 
good for you to know. And then the question that you have to ask yourselves is the market in my, uh, in my geography, is it going to be big enough? Right. And then the question is, um, how big of an audience do I want to build? Right. So for example, if you go, if you want to produce something about, uh, Japanese comics, manga, you know, um, globally, there's maybe a massive market, but if you want to produce, um, content targeted to, um, uh, a German, um, audience, then obviously this, um, this target audience becomes a lot smaller, right? Um, and then the question for you is, um, do I think that maybe the, um, 500,000 people, 300,000 people, um, that are in this target audience, are they big enough for me to, um, to, to go after? Um, and that's something, that's a question that you only, you can solve, um, in general. And this is something that, that we at Maker Suite very strongly believe in is, um, is communities and micro communities, right? So no matter how niche, um, the content is that you want to produce, um, there is going to be an audience because if you're interested in it, it's very likely that a couple of hundred or a couple of uh, thousand other people are also interested in it, right? And if some, if um, something uh, has been proven over the last couple of years is that you do not need to have a massive um, uh, audience to actually um, build a business around um, around content, right? Sometimes a couple of hundred subscribers, sometimes a couple of thousand subscribers are enough to um, um, to build a really good business. Um, depending on what you're doing outside of this content, right? If you're only relying on AdSense and the ad revenue that comes in through YouTube, then maybe 500 subscribers are not enough. But um, if you um, offer a service, a consulting service, um, or uh, maybe if you have a little product, um, then 500 or 2,000 subscribers are more than enough, right? So um, you always have to look at it in a in a in a broader in a broader picture, and ask yourself um, um, what is the target audience that I want to go after? What is the um, basically the business that I actually want to build? Um, um, and then what I would recommend to you, and this is, I'm also German, so I'm doing the same, uh, when I create content in, uh, in German is I do a global search and obviously, uh, I am able to speak English. So I create everything in English. And then, um, what I simply do is I just at the very end, translate the script into German. And then I'm, I'm going in and I'm individualizing the script in German. Um, that's what I do. Um, that's my workflow in the future. Um, obviously, we will localize Maker Suite more and more. Um, again, um, um, I hope that you have a little bit of patience with us. Um, because as you know, uh, um, we're a very small team and we can't do everything at once. So um, yeah, that's the, the current workflow. Do everything in English. And then uh, at the very, very end, translate it into your language and then individualize it. Um, and in the future, obviously, localization will be possible. And then the transcripts, the summaries and everything will also be in your um, uh, in your own language. And then you can have the whole workflow um, in German or French uh, or Chinese um, or any of the other languages um, that you're speaking. What is the best work for, uh, to create using Maker Suite? Um, I think, uh, what I've just shown you is the best workflow actually. So, um, I've today I've shown you the, the script writing process. Um, I think, um, a very important part of Maker Suite is also the, the research part. Um, I think that's actually, um, really the core of, uh, of everything because it always starts with research and understanding your niche, your target audience, the competition, um, the stories um, that are working um, compared to those that are not working. And um, so um, if you have absolutely no idea on where to begin, start an exploration, type in a keyword about a topic that you want to do. So for example, um, Japanese, 
uh, comics or, or manga, or if you have a favorite comic, then type in that name. Do research about that topic um, and then look at the reports that Makersuite is providing you, look at the ideas that it's recommending to you, um, and then start your script writing process from there. Um, brief the AI the way I described to you um, in at the beginning of this webinar. And then within a couple of minutes, you should have your first draft of a video script. Um, and that should already set you up um, to, to actually create something um, that has taken you far less time um, and is probably from a quality perspective already much, much better um, than if you uh, didn't do any research and just started from scratch and uh, faced writer's block for a couple of days. So the workflow I would recommend is, yeah, start with the research and then follow the funnel through the research um, and then write your script from there. How to get started with videos, uh, technical setup. Um, I'm a bit intimidated by the process. Um, okay, that is a very big topic. Um, I think make a suite covers the first base. So the research part, the script writing part, and getting from I have no idea to, um, to a script. When you then have your script, um, it really depends on what you want to do. Do you want to do a faceless YouTube channel uh, with an AI voice and stock footage? Do you want to um, have a camera set up like I have with a microphone and do talking head video uh, where you then add B-roll and stock footage into it? Do you want to do like one of the previous users um, uh, write a script for a documentary piece? Um, it really depends on what you want to do. And then the setup um, really depends um, yeah, on, on what you're trying to do, right? So um, for what I'm doing, um, an iPhone camera um, is enough, uh, would be enough, or a webcam or simply the camera from your computer. Um, and if you um, want to do something more elaborate, you probably need a camera uh, like, like this here. Um, with like a nice lens and a good microphone, and then you can run around um, and shoot your content. Um, so yeah, if you want, let us know um, a little bit more specifically what you're trying to achieve, and then we will get back to you um, on how to um, uh, do the technical setup. And then obviously the last beast to tame is, is post-production and the whole editing process. Um, and then it really depends on how comfortable you feel with uh, post-production. Um, and if you have questions there, please also let us know. For the research and explore part, can I do this for any given channel, i.e. give channel as input and get deep details about the channel's audience, the best time to post and topical authority? So um, at the moment, it does not work like this. Uh, it works a little bit differently. So at the moment, um, you basically have to give a keyword and then it will analyze hundreds of videos that are um, created surrounding this keyword or about this keyword. Um, and then um, it shows you what content we believe you should be creating next. And if you want to know more about the research process, I advise you to watch the tutorial video on our YouTube channel or uh, the webinar that we have created a couple of weeks ago, because it goes into a lot um, more detail and um, tells you exactly how it's done. Um, in the future, we will um, allow you to integrate your own YouTube channel into Maker Suite, and uh, then through um, basically an integration with YouTube, um, we will be able to analyze your content and also um, other people's uh, uh, content and channels. Um, but there's a few technical challenges here and there. Um, so this will not be coming to the future anytime soon. But essentially what we want to try to build with Makersuite is um, a, a complete content creation hub for you, right? You upload, um, or you connect your different social media channels, um, and then you can navigate um, and, and monitor uh, your creation process from, from Makersuite. 
will there be an opportunity to increase the number of explorations? So, um, first of all, this depends um, on, first of all, what subscription tier are you already uh, subscribed to? Uh, which lifetime deal do you have? Um, um, we will, um, if you, if you run out of explorations at the end of the month, for example, because you have a tier one um, and you have exceeded or trying to exceed the limit, then um, in the future, um, there is the possibility that we will bring a top up um, uh, to, to make a suite. Um, we haven't given it too much thought as of now. Um, because we feel that the limits that the different tiers at the moment have um, are very generous um, and um, people are not um, reaching those limits um, in big enough numbers um, for us to, to actually uh, make this change or add this um, top-up feature to the product. But obviously in the future, um, this might completely change. And um, in general, um, it is not planned to uh, now increase the exploration uh, limits um, to the tiers that we already have in place. Um, yeah, hope that answers the question. Would you consider building a chat function to ask questions about the discovery? This is a really, really good um, point that you have made here and um, it's also something that we're discussing internally. Um, it's something that we want to have in the product um, and um, yeah, we first want to get a little bit more elaborate data and more um, ability for you to actually uh, look at all the different data that we are collecting for you. Um, and um, then in the future, we will also also add data interpretation. But um, yeah, it's also something that is not extremely up, up high on, on the list of priorities, uh, but it would be a really nice to have, uh, definitely. This is, for example, something that you can put on our public product roadmap and then uh, tell people to upvote for it um, and um, yeah, basically uh, move it up higher on the priority list. When will story type script be out? And also, is it possible to create scripts for a webinar? Um, so story type script, I think, is out uh, as of now with the storytelling frameworks. Um, that's our first attempt to address this um, problem. And then um, for scripts for webinars, um, yeah, um, as of now, we don't have those. Um, but it's good to know. We will note it down, and then we will um, we will we, we can always add it um, in the future. As I said, those storytelling frameworks. Um, what we want to do is we want to build a library about those, and then um, yeah, it's something uh, that we can spend uh, a day or two uh, to develop this framework, and then um, and then upload it to Make a Suite. Or if you already have a few uh, nice frameworks. Uh, that work well for webinars. Um, you know where to find us, let us know about them, and then um, we can put them into the product. I used one of 10 recently, and I thought it was really helpful to see all the top performing outlier videos and thumbnails in one page related to the topic. I imagine you could do that fairly easily. Um, yes, that is true. And to some extent, we are already doing this. Um, and um, if you, um, for example, watch our exploration tutorial and uh, the previous webinar, what you will see is that um, we don't show outlier videos, but we show um, uh, topic clusters um, that are overperforming, right? So. Um, it's, it's, it's a very similar metric. And if you go then into these topic clusters, you will find most of these videos in there are actually outlier videos. Those are videos that are performing above average compared to all the other content. 
that those specific YouTube channels that have published these video videos um, have have published in the past. So uh, on Makersuite, outlier videos are packaged a little bit differently, and you have to look a little bit uh, to find them. But you can find them if you go to um, uh, the exploration reports and you look at the four different quadrants uh, in the graph and then you go to the top right hand quadrant you look at the topic clusters there and then if you go deep you'll find the outlier videos mega suite is awesome amazing you're awesome <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> we are we're doing our best uh to uh yeah to really deliver a really cool product uh, that is making your lives easier and uh yeah um, we hope we can continue um to do this and uh yeah always nice to get positive feedback and um yeah it's what um obviously keeps us motivated and um it's basically the the fuel on our fire um every positive message and and really hearing the stories on how you're using the product and how it makes your life easier um because um yeah a year ago, um, there was nothing, right? It was just a concept and an idea in our heads. And um, then it started to come to life with the first designs that we did pretty much a year ago. Um, and um, yeah, uh, at the same time, we then started developing Maker Suite. And fast forward a year, um, we now have uh, thousands uh, of users and um, uh, a big thriving community and uh, we do these webinars and it's super exciting for us to actually yeah, work on this on this living organism and baby and 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 build it um, together with you guys well, let's see if we get one more uh question let me just get it on the screen and then uh, we can start talking off is it possible to create a folder in projects because i use it for several youtube channels and i want to organize it into separate folders thanks really great idea um we thought about maybe not adding a folder structure but a different different spaces um so very similar to what you have in slack or in discord so you can basically organize your maker suite um, um, according to the different YouTube channels that ha you have, or maybe the different clients you have. Um, so that was our idea uh, of addressing this problem. Um, uh, that for some of you, uh, maybe everything is in the same place right now. Um, but maybe folders are a, a really nice quick fix for the interim. Um, we will, let's discuss it uh, um, internally. Um, we will discuss it internally. And then if it is something that we can do um, fairly quickly, um, yeah, why not? It, it, it looks like a good, uh, or it feels like a really good workaround for this issue. Great. Um, that is a wrap. I think we have covered all the questions in general that we have gotten. Um, so yeah, thank you all for joining. And maybe Philip, you, you want to say the final words <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, thank you again uh, for so many of you to join and to send so many questions. Um, and obviously, this webinar will now go live on uh, on YouTube and will stay there forever. Um, so, um, yeah, for those of you who have missed the live, um, also thank you for watching this webinar and uh, see you in the next tutorial um, and the next webinar in a couple of weeks. Have a great great time using Make a Sweet. Thank you. Bye.